Tony Nitt is the CEO of Get Safe Online, the leading source of unbiased, authoritative, and easy to understand information on protection against fraud, identity theft, viruses, and many other problems encountered online. After 30 years in law enforcement in the UK, Tony has led Get Safe Online since 2006. He is passionate, like we are, about online safety and educating the public to be safer, more secure, and confident when using the internet. A bit of course, that consumers and small businesses and jointly funded between the government and private sector. Get Safe Online is a government defraud online security advice channel. It is world leading initiative and a non profit organization. And the gentleman himself, I do apologize. I had to use AI to get you, Tony. How are you doing this morning? My AI has got some good advantages, has it? Mike, good morning. It's great to be with you and all your listeners. It's, it's good to be with you. I don't think you're in Panama this time. Where are you at this morning? In London, is it? No, no. I'm uh, I'm in a much better place than London. I'm in Wales, in a place called Cardiff. Oh, um, I love that place. I love Cardiff. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, uh, the weather's a bit overcast. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm always a little bit jealous when I speak to you in St. Lucia. I know I don't that. I think <laughs> you, uh, you people know what overcast means. Mm. Foggy, rain, sometimes a little snow, but not much. <laughs> well, but, I, let me know when that's on and I won't come during that season, okay? All right. Tell, tell us about Get Safe Online. It's important we always talk to you. And I wish I were able to talk to you very often, Tony, because so much has happened in the Caribbean in the last couple of months. But just give our listeners a, a brief overview as to what Get Safe Online is all about. Well, as you said, uh, Mike, I'm, uh, I'm an ex-police officer, and when I was in the police dealing with serious and organised online crime, um, I helped form Get Safe Online, which is a non-for-profit organisation. It's to advise everyone that goes online, from children all the way up to silver surfers and small businesses. And as you said, we're passionate about what we do. The whole team are passionate about what we do. And we want people to be safe and secure and feel like they can uh, use the internet and know that they're going to come out of it successfully. Right. And of course, not only that, I mean, the company has relaunched uh, its latest campaigns, I, I understand, from August 2023, with the new, of course, their new Check website feature. What's that all about? Well, Check a website is fantastic. Um, anyone who's going to go online and go to a website that they don't know, and even if they do know, it's well worth checking the uh, checker website. You put the, the name of the website in, um, and it'll come back and give you a score on... I'm not going to say it'll give you the score on the service available, uh-huh. so whether the parcels are good, whether the, the, the things you're buying are any good. What it tells you about is the, the governance of the actual website. Is it secure? Has it got malware on there? Um, is it, has it only just started a couple of days ago and it's actually there to uh, defraud you? So it's a really useful piece of information that you can get and feel a little bit more confident when you're going online and buying goods or getting information. Now, you, you, you mentioned a, a big word there. Well, I call it a big word. I just wanted to break it down for our listeners. You mentioned malware. What's malware all about? Well, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's very simply just a bad bit of code that somebody manages to get on your computer to get your computer to do things that you wouldn't want to do. Um, you, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about ransomware, I know, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's an example, but it, it can put a virus on so it can stop you working properly. It might log on to your keystroke. It might look at what your what you're looking at online, it might try and capture your email password or any other password. So malware is really not good. And it's taking, it's taking precautions to stop that happening, which is one of the most important things you can do, both on your mobile phone, on your tablet, uh, your laptop and your desktop. Right. And you also have other campaigns as well. I understand Safer Students, uh, which started up September 2023. Yes, that's right. We, um, you know, we, we we produce a campaign every single month about what we're doing and how we're doing it, and it's really important uh, about not being uh, a victim. Um, you know, I talk about the internet all the time, and when I talk to you, Mike, um, mm-hmm. it's really important that we put this across. But we've also got to remember the internet is a fantastic place. Millions and millions of interactions and transactions around the world every single day, successful, but of course. 
we talk about the horror stories. And, and when you look at it, there are a, a lot of horror stories around. But remember, it's good, but you, it's great to take the necessary precautions and go into the Get Safe Online website. And that is available, uh, as you know, in St. Lucia. Um, and go in there and get the advice and, and also asking people. You know, if you're not sure, ask a friend, ask your parents, ask your children, ask your neighbours, ask the people you work with. Because if, with a lot of us, we see, we go look through rose-tinted glasses and we don't, we're actually looking for something and we miss the, the bad stuff that might be around as well. And of course, um, the next question I'm going to ask you recently, and we just talk about St. Lucia, a number of Caribbean governments, in fact, Trinidad, there were a number of cyber attacks. And I want to come in there because when I say cyber attacks, people always want to know why is ransomware awareness critical to St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean? Because a number of the governments suffered. In fact, Trinidad, uh, I don't know if you read on the news, they suffered that and a number of other Caribbean islands as well. So why is ransomware awareness critical to St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean? Well, the one thing I've realized, and we're in 20 countries around the world, that it's not, it's not specifically one particular country or the Caribbean. Whatever you I see in, in one country happens in every country. So ransomware has been big in the United Kingdom. It started probably going back 20 years ago with um, gambling companies. And that was when I was in the police and I investigated it. And they're, they're big money makers of these gambling companies, and they were hit with ransomware. Um, other, other organizations, the National Health Service in the UK, were hit by it. And they go anywhere they think they can get money. Um, certainly, you mentioned um, other countries. Well, in the Belize, 355 gigabytes of compromised data um, with the Belize Electric Electricity Company, uh, a ransom group that had apparently targeted the company since May of this year. And the company stepped up its security measures and as a result, it was successful in, in preventing hackers from encrypting the data, because that's what they do. Uh, first of all, when it comes to ransomware, it's a piece of malicious cut software, which I talked about, designed to block access to the computer or to the system. Um, and as a result, it will ask for a sum of money to be paid. Now, although ran ransomware is usually aimed at business, it's also aimed at individuals. And that can be a bit of a shock. You can buy a computer now relatively cheaply, you know, um, three, four hundred dollars. The information on that, maybe all your projects, all your photographs, everything you've done in the last four or five years, you'd pay three, four times that to get that back. So ransomware is a particularly different thing, but there is something we can all do about it. What can we do about it? Well, updates play a very important role on your computer. Operating systems updates often include uh, crucial security patches that address the, the vulnerability. Cyber criminals love exploiting these vulnerabilities. We recommend that you set up a system to automatically install updates. Now, that applies to individuals um, and small businesses. It may not apply to big businesses who actually go evaluate that update um, before they can install it on the system. So they've got a bigger problem. Um, by keeping your operating system up to date um, and, and fortifying the defenses against the ransom attack, uh, and it also keeps your security keep your security fully up to date. So the security software you've got on it, and um, these are these are very clever, sophisticated attacks. But it doesn't take a lot to stop yourself being a target and doing it. Um, don't click on websites that you're not sure. Go to check a website first. Find out whether it's okay, whether it's got malicious software on. And because some of these websites, the owners don't even know it's got, they've got malicious software on their sites. So being careful about that is really, really important. I want to ask you a question there as you said that. Because um, in terms of ransomware, in terms of, first of all, you said it's important to ensure that you always update your system. If someone says to you that you don't have an antivirus and Windows by virtue of the updates, takes care of that antivirus. Is that true? It certainly goes a long way. Um, uh, you know, the thing that we push is to keep those updates there, but also it's, it's belt and braces approach. 
So have your updates done, but it's well worth getting uh, anti uh, uh, security software. It's no longer called antivirus because it does a lot more than stop viruses. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's well worth doing that. If you know, if you've got all your your data on there, your photographs, your projects, your essays, everything that you've done, it might be worth spending twenty, thirty, forty dollars. But you don't have to. And there are organisations. You've just mentioned one that you can get um, free security software to put on your on your uh, computer. I use one of those. Um, I use different ones all the time. I've never had a problem since I've used um, uh, Microsoft security software. Uh, it's not been a problem for me, but there are others um, that you can use as well. Okay. And of course, that sometimes um, those of ransomware will slow down your system. But tell me, who's the most vulnerable to ransomware and why? And does it really slow down your computer? I suppose, um, as I said earlier on, um, the, the, the most vulnerable are healthcare. Um, that's what we've seen in the UK um, because they hold large amounts of sensitive patient information. Right. Financial services, retail, education, um, who else? We've got energy and utilities. Government um, are vulnerable to it as well, we've got to remember. Uh, but really, it's any business. Um, and also uh, any individuals. So, you know, that's where we've got to be careful. And it's people who possibly don't know everything about security, but they're the things that we need to be aware of. Mm. Apart from ransomware, what other campaigns are Get Safe Online spearheading? Well, I mentioned, and it's worth mentioning again, check a website. Fantastic uh, facility, free. Everything on Get Safe Online is free. The information is. Reaching that campaign that we've done is for students and kids to become more safer online. And, you know, I regularly talk to parents and they say, oh, the problem is my, my children know more about the Internet than I do. Yes. Yeah, but they don't know more about security, <laughs> do they? Because you're worldly wise and you know about these things. Right, right. Uh, it's important to, to look at the big current events that are going on around AI. You mentioned that yourself. Yes. And AI is really, really important in relation to what, uh, what's happening. Mm. And is, before I ask you for your last words, is there any indication for any business house or any government agency or any listener this morning on a computer that they will see as an indication of ransomware? Is something going to pop up or it just happens and they have well, no clue? Cer- certainly, if, you, if you're in the worst case, what will pop up will, you cannot, in fact, you cannot access any of your data. Mm-hmm. and um, you will have to pay us a fa- uh, money if you want to access it. So that's the, possibly the first warning, but you might see your system slowing down. You might see some early activity. And, of course, one of the best things you can do is to do backups on a regular basis. So if that happens, you can call in a computer expert in this field. They can delete your stuff that's on there, and then they can... Um, they can reload the new stuff. Or you might bring an expert in that might find a code in order to break that because the codes of some of these are out there as well. Tell your internet service provider, but also tell law enforcement. Really important that they're aware of what's going on. And and I'm not sure of the um, legalities in St. Lucia, but I'm pretty sure there's a law in St. Lucia to stop people hacking into your system. Right. Again, one more (laughs) before I go to the last words. How vulnerable of fun drives to the PC. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, you put a thumb drive in, you don't know where it's been, you know where it's come from, especially ones that are free, that are given away. You don't know what's on it, what somebody's got. Um, what you can always do is isolate that thumb drive when you put it in and do a, immediately do a security check of it. Do a, um, a, a check with an, what we would know, used to call an antivirus mm-hmm. and put it through. But if you've really got any doubts, if it's been given to you free, you're not sure then I wouldn't recommend using it unless it's really desperate. And that shows by the fact that most businesses now do not allow their, um, their employees to put a thumb drive into business machines. It's just too dangerous. Um, but if you go into, make sure that your system is set up to check that thumb drive before you do anything else, because it can deliver a big shock when everything gets thrown out 
and you can't access any of your data. Tony, I always wish I'd have you uh, like two days a week or three days a week, but uh, because it's important now, because more people are into PC, AI, as they talk about it, governments have been attacked with cyber attacks and so on. But uh, get safe online. Any last words for listeners? I suppose that the most important thing is, you know, make sure your, your operating system is up to date. Make sure your security is up to date. When you say up to date, check. make sure you, you, you're always putting the latest update from, like, if you say Windows. Yeah, well, you can okay. set it to automatic. Okay. So it should be done automatically. All mine are set to automatic. Um, just go into your system and ask for how do I set automatic updates. And if nothing else tells you, YouTube will tell you how to do it. I think YouTube is fantastic and tells you everything you need to do. Right. So that's really important. I think the two other things to do, passwords, most important passwords, probably the most important thing you do personally when you're on the internet. You don't have to change your password on a regular basis, but if you think it's being compromised, do so. But you need more than one password. You need roughly a password for everything that you do, a different password. So you might be talking about 10... 12 passwords. And people say, what do I do with that? Well, you can use a, um, a password safe or a password vault, which you put one master password in and they're all saved in there. You know, you could write it down away from your computer, but write it down in a cryptic format. So a password I used to have was um, Uncle Brian's dog. And it was the name of Uncle... Or no one's going to know Uncle Brian's dog's name. Um, and I used that, but it was a clue to get to where we're going. Third one is social media. Be careful what information you put on on social media. Say that again. Don't Say that again, Tony. Say that again. Say that. That's important. Say that again. <laughs> you know? Oh, don't overshare. I mean, it, it is so important. I'm putting... It's a bit like me coming across to you and, we, and I stay with you for the day and I meet your family and I take loads of photographs and, we do, and then I put them online. Mm. You may not want your family put online and your address put online. So be careful what you put about yourself. But more importantly, be careful what you put on about other people. Um, really, really important. And backups are important as well. And Tony, before I let you go, um, most business houses will have someone responsible for checking the computer systems and making sure it's clean, making sure there's no malware and so on. How often they should be doing that? Because some don't do that at all in terms of security. Well, you know, if you're doing a good system and you set things up automatically, you shouldn't have to look at it that often. Mm-hmm. Maybe set a, maybe set an hour or a couple of hours um, once a month. Other people might say we've got to do it once a week. It depends what you're doing and how important you feel that your system is. There are big companies that have teams of people doing it 24/7. Now, if you're a whole, you're at home, um, you may not have the knowledge. Um, but you can look on, on the Get Safe Online website, get that knowledge, do the checks, make sure, think about your passwords. Maybe, you know, we're coming up to January now, a new year. Maybe that might be a time to really look at your passwords to make sure they're strong. Um, we recommend on the Get Safe Online website that you use two, three separate words added together and maybe put some initials at the end so you know what you're talking about. So it might be, I'm looking out the window here, it might be lamppost. Uh, garden sky mm. or mm. blue sky mm. and I put that, and then at the end I put FB and the FB stands for Facebook so I know that's my password for Facebook or if I'm really clever I put um, X which stands obviously for the old Twitter but actually means Facebook so you know when it comes to dates of birth when I put my date of birth down I'm like the Queen of England or the King of England I should say I've got two dates of birth my date of birth and the date of birth I use on the internet um, so that nobody can look at my true date of birth and know what it is. Little things like that can protect you. Well, most fathers I know of, they tend to use their daughter's name and their number plate, which is an easy way to well, get Well, still the most <laughs> yes. popular one is a, a dog's name. ABC, dog's name too, one, yes. Two, three. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> listen, please, all your listeners, if you do anything as a result of this, go in and put a couple of really good, sophisticated passwords in. Because if you get done on your emails on passwords, it can be a real, real major problem. Tony, I want to thank you. I hope we can do that again. It's always good to have you on. Folks can check out uh, your website, Get Safe Online. Is there any way they can contact you apart from the website? If you go to the website, there's a contact us, and you'll be able to, uh, to do it through that. Okay. Um, but it's always good speaking to you, Mike. And, um, and the timing is perfect. It's uh, 
What is it, half past nine with you? Well, it's half past one with me. Yes. So if ever you want to do this again, please don't hesitate. All right, Tony. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I want to wish you all the best. Merry Christmas to you and the family. And we hope we can chat again. Have a good one. All the best, Mike. Speak to you soon. Thank you. That's Tony. Uh, Nick with us this morning. Get safe online.